The Teapot by Hans Christian Andersen. Did you know that Hans Christian Andersen was Christian? I don't mean only his middle name. I mean his worldview, his writings, his demeanor. This has been a delightful discovery that my wife brought to my attention. She's from Kristensand, Norway, close to Denmark, Andersen's homeland. She has a multi-volume set of all his fairy tales. She pointed out to me how so many of them have a Christian worldview, and some of them even directly talk about God or the Bible. This story is the first of two fairy tales by Hans Christian Andersen, reproduced in this book. This fairy tale underscores how wrong it is for one to think too highly of himself. Here are the recollections of a teapot that snoodily looks down on the other members of the tea set since their role is not as important as hers. Fortunately for the teapot, by the end of the tale, she learns her lesson. Unfortunately for us, many teapots around us haven't seemed to learn their lessons about the vanity of pride. I think Anderson wrote this story about a teapot because we can all see how silly it is for a teapot to be proud and arrogant. When we think we have plenty of reasons to puff ourselves up and believe ourselves quite marvelous, we often become as silly as the teapot in this fairy tale. Once upon a time, there was a proud teapot, proud of her fine porcelain, proud of her long spout, proud of her wide handle. She had something in the front and something in the back, and that's all she talked about. But she did not talk about her lid. There was a crack and chip in it. It was a shortcoming, that lid was, and one does not talk about one's shortcomings. Others do that quite willingly. The cups and the cream jug and the sugar bowl, the whole tea set, remembered the shortcomings of the lid and talked about it, much better than the good handle and the excellent spout. The teapot knew that. I know them, she said to herself. I also know my faults. I acknowledge him, which proves that I am humble and good-mannered. We all have our faults, but then we have our strong points, too. The cups, they all have a handle each, and the sugar bowls have a lid. I have both, plus something in the front, a spout, something they will never get. This makes me the queen of the tea table. The sugar bowl and the cream jug, they are servants of good taste at the table. But I, I am the one who gives, the one who is in charge, the one who spreads blessings to alleviate the thirst of mankind. In me are the Chinese leaves and the tasteless water transformed. All these things said the teapot when she was young and arrogant. She stood on the most elegant tables and was lifted by the finest hands. One day, the finest hand was clumsy and the teapot fell. Her spout broke, her handle cracked. The lid's not even worth mentioning. We've said enough about that already. The teapot lay fainted on the floor and all the scalding hot water poured out. It was a hard blow. But the hardest was that they all laughed at the teapot when they should have been laughing at the clumsy hand. I'll never live this down, said the teapot. I was called a cripple, and the very next day I was given away to a beggar woman who begs for scraps at the door. Now I sank down into the deepest poverty, and I didn't know which way to turn. But everything turned out for the better. One can be one thing, and then become something quite different. Dirt was laid in me, but it wasn't a funeral because they planted a flower bulb in that dirt. Who put it in there and who gave it away, that I don't know, but I have it. It was a compensation for the Chinese leaves and the hot water. A compensation for the broken spout and handle. The bulb lay in the soil. It laid in me and became my heart. I had never had a heart before. There was life in me now and power. The pulse was beating the power of life from which sprang forth a green shoot. 
From all the life and thoughts and feelings sprang forth a beautiful flower. I saw it. I was carrying it. I forgot myself for the glory of the flower. It is blessed to forget oneself for others. The flower didn't thank me. It didn't think about me. It was praised and adored. I was so happy, and I'm sure the flower was too. One day I heard them say that the flower deserved a better pot. They cracked me across the middle, and that hurt me bad. But the flower received a better pot, and I was thrown out into the yard. Here I lay, a broken piece, an old chip there. But I have my memories, and I can never lose them. When we focus on ourselves, our lives get out of whack. We get consumed with self-love. When we focus on others, our lives are in the proper perspective. I love the acrostic that teaches this so well. Joy. Put Jesus first. Others second. Yourself last. Thank you for watching. I love you guys. As Tigger says, ta-ta for now.